How how Bruce Lee died? 20th, 1973, Bruce Lee died tragically at the age of 32. The official cause of death, a fatal reaction to aspirin. Bruce Lee, the most iconic martial arts character of the last century, was known globally for his amazing physique and action techniques. Just as Bruce Lee was about to transition into a global superstar, he dropped dead under questionable conditions. Over 50 years after his death, Global action superstar Jackie Chan, his protege, clears the air on the circumstances behind his mentor's demise, answering major questions surrounding Bruce Lee's death. Why didn't anyone think of conducting an autopsy to unravel Bruce Lee's sudden death? What role did his family play in fueling the rumours of foul play? Was Bruce Lee murdered by members of the Hong Kong underworld? Join us in this revelatory video as Jackie Chan breaks in tears. Bruce Lee's death is not what you are being told. The sudden and unexpected death of the martial arts legend, Bruce Lee sent shockwaves around the world. Lee, who was on the verge of global superstardom following his major Hollywood film, <laughs> died from questionable circumstances. Ever since that tragic day nearly 50 years ago, speculations have swirled over the exact cause of Lee's untimely demise. The name Bruce Lee automatically evoked images of power, speed and prestige, all of which embodied how the world saw Lee. Born in San Francisco, California in 1940 to Cantonese parents, Lee was raised in Hong Kong after his family moved back to China when he was three months old. Bruce Lee's father, Lee Hoi Chuen, was a famous opera singer and film actor. Hence, Bruce Lee appeared in about 20 Chinese films as a child. The outgoing Bruce Lee was athletic and involved in cha-cha dancing and rooftop fighting. This flair for bodily kinesthetics led him to pursue martial arts formally under the legendary Wing Chun master Yip Man at age 14. After high school, Bruce Lee moved to Seattle to study drama and philosophy at the University of Washington. He made a living in 1959, teaching martial arts and working odd jobs to survive. It was during this time that Bruce developed his martial arts style, Jeet Kune Do. This was a breakaway from the tradition, favouring practicality, flexibility and his early background in fencing and boxing. This brought a unique take on martial arts. After his marriage to Linda Emery in 1964, Bruce continued to teach martial arts and opened his first martial arts studio in Seattle, gaining attention for his unique teaching style. As a teenager, Lee was said to have been involved in rooftop fighting matches against rival martial arts schools in Hong Kong. Despite opponents often outweighing him, Lee reportedly won fight after fight with his lightning fast strikes. It was said that he moved like a cobra and would end matches in seconds. Stuntman Jean LaBelle recalls Lee silencing an extra who confronted him on set. Lee had the overconfident challenger knocked out cold after several heavy punches. Bruce Lee participated and stunned spectators in the Long Beach International Karate Championship in 1964, which opened doors for him to demonstrate his unique style on the screen. First came this role as a sidekick in the Green Hornet TV series, later attracting the attention of major Hong Kong film producers. This led to a two-film deal with Golden Harvest. After giving a martial arts demonstration at the karate competition, Lee was challenged by Taekwondo black belt Vic Moore. Moore launched a powerful kick straight at Lee's head, but it was effortlessly deflected. Lee then counterattacked with blinding speed, landing a punch just short of Moore's face to make his point. Moore admitted later, I knew I was totally outclassed. Even high-level martial artists fell flat to Lee's exceptional class. Judo gold medalist Bud Shinohara recalls sparring with Lee after class one day. I grabbed him and Bruce just wasn't there. He'd slipped away instantaneously. Before I knew it, he executed a foot sweep that sent me straight to the ground. Shinohara was humbled by Lee's superhuman fighting gifts. 
Fists of Fury and The Chinese Connection released in 1971 and 1972 launched Bruce Lee into stardom in Asia. Way of the Dragon, filmed in Rome, continued his ascendance. Enter the Dragon was co-produced by Warner Bros and was prepped to usher the genre into mainstream Western culture. This was the game changer for Lee and martial arts globally. But just days before the release of Enter the Dragon, Bruce Lee died of an allergic reaction to medication. He was 32 years old. Bruce Lee's untimely death was and is still shrouded in mystery to this day. The official cause was cerebral edema, which was a swelling of the brain. The report stated that Lee had an adverse reaction to an analgesic medication that he had taken for a headache. This report seemed way too convenient for the ever-active Bruce Lee. Many thought leaders believed that Lee was murdered by the Hong Kong Triads, a group of powerful organised crime syndicates known for all kinds of crimes, including drug trafficking, counterfeiting and money laundering. One has to wonder what an upstanding movie icon had to do with the members of the Asian underworld. It could be that Lee's fame and plans to introduce Chinese martial arts to the Western mainstream upset the syndicate. The Hong Kong Triads has a history dating back to the 18th century, which makes it a very conservative and traditional organisation. It is said that Lee's murder was a move to protect their turf. Despite the popularity of this news, there has been no clear evidence linking anyone from the Hong Kong underworld with Lee's demise. However, Bruce Lee had collapsed in Hong Kong the year before. Doctors also blamed this incident on a reaction to medication. However, this trend of collapses in Hong Kong seems too suspicious to be normal. Members of Bruce Lee's family contributed to the mystery as his wife told of his obsession with experimenting with liquids and powders months before his death. She stated that he desperately wanted to develop a nutritional supplement. This revelation stirred many questions in the minds of his fans and business associates. Could some untested substances have caused unforeseen problems? Did Lee take a mysterious powder the day he died? To make matters worse, Bruce Lee's death was not thoroughly investigated at the time. The police did not perform an autopsy. The doctor's medication story was sufficient for them. This was unheard of for a star of his level who died under mysterious conditions. This only further deepened the uncertainties surrounding Lee's premature passing. Coming back to America, there were whispers that Bruce Lee's involvement in Hollywood and his meteoric rise as an Asian in 1970 made him a target. It is also possible that Lee learned a dark secret about the powers that be in Hollywood and they wanted to keep him quiet at all costs. There is no doubt that Hollywood is a web of secrets. Much recently, there were conversations about the fact that his rigorous training regimen may have played a part in his body shutting down. Medical experts state that Lee's excessive training could have fatally damaged his health in ways that were not fully understood at the time. Some say that these conditions combined and led to a heat stroke. A recent analysis of Lee's physical routine shows its extreme nature. He believed in constantly shocking the body to spur growth, explaining that the physical needed to reflect the spiritual. He developed innovative training methods utilising simple equipment like resistance bands, weighted vests and a self-designed exercising device that used pulleys and chains for dynamic full-body movements. His ultra-heavy leg training involved deep squats with over 300 pounds on his back. This may have contributed to his recurring back troubles and experts have advised against loading the spine with such a disproportionate weight. Lee also experimented extensively with supplements, protein powders, vitamins and shakes made from ingredients such as pollen and chlorella. It is also said that he would consume about 30 to 40 vitamin bombs daily, also using stimulants. He once mentioned using ephedrine to lose weight for films. He was also an early adopter of the electric muscle stimulator to intensify workouts. His pioneering regimen clashed with the evolving sports science. Without a doubt, his demise left a permanent void in cinema, culture and martial arts. 
50 years after his demise, the impact of his life continues to reverberate in the culture to date. Before Bruce Lee, Asian actors were essentially non-existent in big-budget Hollywood films. Lee was instrumental in smashing these racial barriers and paving the way for Asian representation on the big screen. With his mesmerizing performances, he caught the eyes of Hollywood executives who wanted to capitalize on his unique sensation. His training as an actor also made for a well-seasoned lead actor who could show the depth of the characters. He demonstrated a commanding screen presence on par with established stars and opened Asia to the Western world as a viable audience worth billions of dollars. As far back as 1973, Warner Brothers took the bold step to cast Lee as the lead character for Enter the Dragon. The film, which earned $25 million at the box office only, went on to spark a surge in martial arts. He also played a huge part in reshaping global perceptions of Asian masculinity. His physique showed confidence, strength and mastery as opposed to the meek and diminished Asian stereotypes. Beyond his exploits in breaking boundaries, Lee redefined what action choreography looked like. His athleticism and a strong grasp of martial arts philosophy resulted in a fighting sequence never seen before. His style of martial arts infused moves from different disciplines which kept audiences in awe. He was able to convey drama through combat, embody control and move with speed. In other words, he reimagined what Heights action films could reach. Before Lee, martial arts was a practice shrouded in secrecy for many centuries. It was principally done in the shadows and was largely mysterious to outsiders. Lee's films showed the power and discipline required to master the arts. The enrollment rate of karate, kung fu and taekwondo skyrocketed as a new generation of youngsters subscribed to the rigors of the arts. Arguably, one of Lee's most important impacts on the culture was his emphasis on spiritual, mental and character-building aspects of martial arts. His principles went beyond the mastery of physical techniques to a holistic approach for the public to appreciate the depth and richness of age-old martial traditions. Bruce Lee reintroduced the world to the Chinese martial arts of his childhood, including Wing Chun, Northern Shaolin and Tai Chi. The discipline and focus these arts instill resonated with practitioners of all backgrounds. To this day, Lee is considered the most pivotal figure in spurring interest in Chinese martial arts in the West. The next, and probably the most lasting effect of the Bruce Lee legacy, is a 67-year-old Chinese acting legend with over 150 film credits to his name, Jackie Chan. Known for his slapstick acrobatics and fearless stunt work, Jackie Chan has entertained audiences globally for over 50 years, becoming one of the most universally beloved film stars. His journey began humbly in Hong Kong before rising to fame through perseverance and innovation. Born in Hong Kong in 1954 to parents who worked for the French ambassador, Chan lived on the grounds of the Victoria Peak Estate. He earned the name Cannonball for his academic struggles and mischievous behaviour in school. As a child actor, Chan appeared in a few movies as an extra. He would later enrol at the China Drama Academy to study martial arts, acrobatics, singing and acting. He appeared as a stuntman in several films for years before finally receiving his first lead role in the 1973 film Little Tiger of Canton. His breakout performances would come in 1978's Snake in the Eagle's Shadow and Drunken Master. This performance combined action and comedy and propelled Chan to global stardom. Jackie Chan wanted to distinguish his style from that of his legendary predecessor, Bruce Lee. While Lee was stern and gritty, Chan crafted an everyman persona centered on humor and elaborate, risky stunts. Some of Chan's signature moves incorporated parkour sequences and the use of random props as improvised weapons. Chan finally broke through in Hollywood with 1995's Rumble in the Bronx, which grossed $32 million in the US alone. 
Its success led to Chan being cast alongside Chris Tucker in 1998's Rush Hour, a major hit that established Chan as an international celebrity able to transition smoothly between Asian and American film markets. Some of Jackie Chan's most beloved works include the Police Story series, Mr. Nice Guy, Who Am I? and Shanghai Noon. He performed many stunts himself, leading to frequent injuries. While this approach earned Chan respect, he has been criticized for scenes perceived as overly dangerous. As a child, Chan idolized Bruce Lee. He first met Lee as a stuntman on the set of Fist of Fury in 1972, later working with him again on Enter the Dragon. Chan was 17 years old then, but that fateful encounter started a friendship that profoundly impacted him. Chan first saw Lee on screen as a child in the 1966 film The Green Hornet, completely mesmerized by Lee's dramatic presence and lightning fast kicks. On the set of Fist of Fury, Chan admitted that his heart was pounding with excitement as he could not wait to see his childhood hero. Lee came in calm and confident and Chan described him as perfection. One day, Chan was practicing alone on set, working on his kicks. Out of nowhere, Lee walked over and introduced himself. Chan could barely form words, stammering it was an honor to meet him. Lee smiled and started giving Chan pointers on his technique, showing him how to smoothly transition from different kicks into other moves. Lee told Chan that he had good potential and could become a star one day with hard work. Chan took those words of encouragement to heart. Lee taught Chan important lessons about perseverance and humility that guided Chan throughout his eventual rise to fame. When Jackie Chan heard the shocking news of Bruce Lee's demise, he was devastated. This further fueled his motivation to break into the industry and honor Lee's legacy. Chan knew he had been gifted wisdom directly from the master himself and promised to live up to those lessons. Recalling his memories of Lee, Chan described him as strong, confident, and in perfect health. Chan said, Bruce was never sick. He would never even catch a cold. This has fueled conspiracy theories, which argue that foul play was involved in Lee's death, though no evidence supports this. In a recent interview, Jackie Chan gave his thoughts on the persistent rumors about the loss of his childhood idol. He stated that the public was simply told that Lee fainted and was in a coma that he never awoke from. Jackie Chan came out to dispel the rumors that the Chinese triads or any other organized crime groups were involved in Lee's death. He announced that there was no truth to the rumor. Chan stated that although the authorities found no evidence of foul play, the tragedy still looked fresh. Commenting on conjectures that Lee's extreme training and diet caused underlying issues, Chan acknowledges that those were different, more primitive times. They didn't know as much about health and nutrition. They pushed their bodies to the limit by training for hours daily. He stated that although we would never know for sure, it is possible that Bruce took something that he reacted badly to. Jackie Chan never stops letting the world know the kind of impact that Bruce has had on him. He, however, cautions against exaggerated information with little to no evidence. Jackie Chan saw how audiences were captivated by Lee's magnetic charisma and athleticism and was determined to polish his skills to captivate the world too. While filming Enter the Dragon, Lee impressed upon Chan the need for humility, hard work and perseverance to make it in the industry. Chan made a point of differentiating his own style from Lee's, focusing more on slapstick humor and spectacular stunt work versus Lee's intensity and martial arts mastery. Chan was determined never to imitate Lee, but to create his own unique imprint. Lee's moves and philosophy feature prominently in Chan's films as both homage and inspiration. The Rush Hour franchise pays direct tribute to Lee, with Chan exhibiting Lee's classic one-inch punch. And Chan's matching nunchaku skills display techniques learned firsthand from the master himself. Beyond fight choreography, Chan channels Lee's emphasis on emotion over technique, 
He brings exuberance and charm to action sequences, showing that Lee's spirit lives on through him. But according to Chan, no one can replicate Lee's sheer passion. He said, The way Lee would look into the camera full of intensity, he was one of a kind. Jackie Chan was not the only actor Bruce Lee's influenced. He also inspired martial arts, boom inspiring icons like Chuck Norris, Jet Li, and Jean Claude Van Damme. Chuck Norris was a rising competitive karate champion when he met Lee on the set of The Way of the Dragon. He is widely regarded as the man who took up the mantle of a leading martial arts actor. Jet Li was also a wushu prodigy, who Lee showed that it was possible to be a global success. Jet Li stated that he moved to America because of Bruce Lee's inspiration and guidance. Jet Li would later become one of the biggest Chinese martial arts actors. Jean-Claude Van Damme was a bullied kid in Belgium who found solace in Bruce Lee's films. He once said that Lee gave him the confidence to believe in himself, stand up to his oppressors and earn martial arts. Van Damme would eventually become a top action superstar globally. All three legends acknowledge the impact of Lee on their craft. Using different skills, techniques and poses, the work of Bruce Lee continues to live. Although they all invest in high levels of training, they admit that Lee was unique and operated on an almost immortal level. Bruce Lee's impact transcended cinema into popular culture. Long before Kanye West and Michael Jordan had a huge impact on fashion, Bruce popularized streetwear, nunchucks, Wing Chun pants, and Kung Fu shoes. His smooth, controlled manner of movement also inspired dancers and choreographers. The legendary hip-hop collective Wu-Tang Clan made a song tribute that sampled Lee's iconic yells and combat sounds. Lee's appeal is borderless, even evident in Nigerian Afrobeat music, where he exemplifies the genre's themes of struggle and overcoming. Many Nigerian bands employ samples of Lee's famous yells, symbolizing the fighting spirit of their people. Thank you for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, click on the video on your screen to see more mind-blowing videos like this one.